I am here. They cannot hear the Dara Revel fella. He's getting a charger. Hello. Hello. Uh, Unmute. Hello. They can hear you now. Proceed. They can hear me. I wasn't there. Uh, I wasn't muted. Uh, hello, everybody. We're back. It's Wolves. It's Wolves away. It's one of those fucking games. I am sat here not very confident about it at all. We're sat in the bookies. We're talking about. Well, I sat in the bookies. I walk in the bookies. We're sat there talking about. Well, let's, let's see. You got to romp this again. I don't think so. I'm actually. I'm not going to say I'm not confident because, you know, you have to be confident when you have that played Norwegian fella. But I'm not very confident. I'm sat here like. I'm interested to see how he's going to do in a, in a low block of a five. I'm interested to see how the team is doing because, in my opinion, I think the last few performances have been somewhat stagnant creative-wise. So, this is, it's not looking... It, well, it's not that it's not looking good. I think we'll be fine, but looking at it from the outside end might just be me thinking in my whole personal uh, pessimistic way. This isn't going to work. But we've, been out, we've, we've, uh, we've beaten hard at teams. Joe, how are you feeling about it, my son? Um, mixed emotions, really, to be honest. We've had our ups and downs against Wolves. Of course, most recently when we went to their players, De Bruyne went and scored four. Um, so here's hoping for, Tender. you know, the next time. Um, because he's, let's be honest, the last three games he's been subpar. So let's hope that, you know, he just comes out with a game and you know, I won't mind him scoring four again. I'll take that. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll take just the yeah, four. Yeah. Just the four. Take the scrappy four three. Take the scrap. Yeah, take the scrappy four three. I'm absolutely terrified of Adamo Traore still. He still gives me nightmares whenever I think about <laughs> him. Him and baby oil. It's a weird combination, but, you know, a player so fast yet so physical. I mean, we have one now. It's just, uh, you know, he's more potent in front of goal, but, you know, he's a city killer, Adamo Traore. He's like son, city killer. If if they haven't got the season started, they are starting their season tomorrow. Don't you worry about it. Oh, that is going to happen. But it's at Molyneux. It's at Molyneux. It's, it's, it's a famously difficult place to go when you play such a pragmatic team. It is, yeah. And I think that Pep has had to learn how to get Haaland into a game with a back five, mm -hmm. I think, this season already. Of course, Spurs would have been the big test that we were all looking for. I think that was the one that everybody was looking for with uh, in terms of Haaland's performance. Yeah. But I think that we saw against Bournemouth, he got his assist. He didn't really get a sniff of goal, really, in that Bournemouth game where they played a 5-4-1. Then we saw against Nottingham Forest, they played the same, a 5-4-1. But the common... Well, the difference there was Julian Alvarez. We played a two up front, and it got Haaland into the game, and he got a hat-trick, which is why yeah. I've stuck him in our predicted 11, because I think that having that second man up front supporting Haaland, who's a bit better at the link-up. I say, I say a bit. He's a lot better at the link-up play as it stands right now. Um, play this sort of weird hybrid 4-4-2 that we did against uh, Nottingham Forest. And it seems to work against low blocks teams that like to play a five and then another four or a five and a three, um, like yeah. Wolves would seem to do. So I think, um, especially with given the form of the other players as well um, in those areas, then... I think it's not out of the, the realms of possibility of seeing this. Um, I'd like to see mm. it, to be honest, because I think Alvarez is a game changer um, yeah. when he's brought off the bench and why not basically change the game from the start, you know, rip up the game plan, essentially, of, uh, of just the one up top, you know, play two up top. It's something that we have the ability to do now and I do want to see it, but I can't say I'm like, the, the, I can't say the confidence is like at an yeah. all-time high. It's not been the... The greatest of football as of recent. No, not at all. I mean, I don't want to say we're just edging through games, but like we have that X factor now that's uh that's turning things around for us. But I just look at I have the the actually I tell you what, before we go on to this, who do we have? We have Kerwin. Can I just say that the music has grown on me? Jesus Christ, that music will not grow on anyone. That will be gone soon enough, hopefully. Palm at the start. I you know what? I wouldn't be against it, but I want like Joe said, I'd want Alvarez and this kind of thing. Football forever, big up to everyone. What a king. I love football forever. Daniel, Hugh Hyden again. Yeah, he's stuck in the greatest. He's, he's stuck in after greatest. We were talking about last night. Fuck Adama, or should I say Messi, when he played against him. Yeah, that's fair enough. A few score predictions in. 3-0 City to 1 City. Had him one player of the month. What a boy. What an absolute man. Adama has no weapon product. You are coarse on this, man. Holland is 6 foot 5 and muscular. There is no uh, in, very few players in the world stronger than, if any. I think that's a very good point. I think he'd be able to bully a few of the centre halves. I love Nate Collins to death, but he has a... A, a, a rather sussy quote that came out today. He said his father will uh, still criticise me even if he stops Haaland. So that's Haaland's going for. What happened, yeah, to the last, what happened to the last guy who said he was going to stop him? What happened to the Scorback. last guy? 
scored oh, by the last guy. He was on for four minutes and he scored. Shush. <laughs> Alvarez will score, mark my words. You know what? I'd like to think Alvarez is starting. I just I have the team sheet here, so I'm not looking right. But with the team sheet we have set out here, it's kind of a dynamic way of you can play a foot, you, a three, so you play a three, you can play a inverted full back. So you can basically play a four four two. I remember when, do you remember a uh, lockdown season, Joe, uh, Palace away 2 0? Uh, Aguero and Ferran Torres. Yes. Played a 4-4-2 oh my day. days! That was we the most disgusting 4-4-2 in my life. That was a proper order 4-4-2. Right? I can see it wasn't a 4-4-2. Into this, but... That was a 4-2-4. It was Sterling, Jesus, yes. Aguero, and Torres. Yes. My, bl- where is the 4-4? It's 4-2. <laughs> Come on. It was um, but with this kind of formation, obviously, you had the freedom of playing Bernardo off to the right. You have De Bruyne, who pretty much sit in the 10 row, Cancelo tucking in with Rodri, and of course, Stones will be moving inside with Rodri as well. So you're effectively playing what is a 2 3 2 2 or something. I don't know. I can't, I can't maths very well, but either way, this is it. Looks like this could be a very, very good formation for the whole. Um, what's the word? What is the word? Versatility. This would be a very versatile formation that could drop into many different things, which could leave Wolves shitting themselves. But again, I think it's. I don't think it's going to be a correct starting eleven. I think someone's going to be pulled. I think let them say the greatest or something. Or Foden on the right. I don't want to see that. I want to see Alvarez. I want to see Foden. Did Foden start on the left against Forest? Um, Tell us in the comments. I don't think so. No, I don't actually think right. so. In an ideal world, right? I. Fuck, who did start that? Christ. Oh, shit. oh my god, it might have been. That's Foden. Been a I was, I was on was, No, it was Foden because he got the assist for the first what? goal. Yeah, Remember yeah, it was, right. It was Foden. Oh, yeah, because everyone was saying, I hey, you actually passed to Haaland. Yeah, so I'm looking at that and saying, Jesus Christ, my phone's going to die. I'm looking at that and saying, that has the ability to be able to do that. So I really, really like that sign 11. That's Joe's sign 11, but I'm running with it. That's ours. Uh, I'd be more than happy with that, but you know what, what happens with Pepper later? You're going to see a Mariage, you're going to see a Greenish or some shit, or you'll see Phillips playing a double pivot. I'm waiting for it. It's a, it's a typical half 12 a Saturday, um, a typical half 12 Saturday lineup where something's going to come out. Because again, I'm pretty sure that 4 4 2 we were talking about was a half 12 against Palace. But we'll get into the kind of, we can get into the Wolves side of things. That's why we do the streams and we have a longer kind of thing to do. Wolves, again, they they got um they got Nuno's clown and Bruno Lager to come in. I think they play they play a five. Nate and Collins is there again. Love him very dear to my heart, Nate and Collins. But t- tomorrow's gonna be a test for him. Tomorrow's really gonna be a test for any for anyone dealing with that because we're looking for the other then Haaland's gonna start. We're not playing against a bot I don't say bottom fit. He, he has to start every match he can. He's gonna start tomorrow because hasn't been any word of injuries. He was in getting his picture taken today with the player of the month in his training gear, so we know there's no injuries because he's in training, so he will start tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be... <laughs> what is that? If Greenish seen... doesn't go on his next side, he will have to shave his head. Brilliant he will Dan. not be shaving his head. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? I'll, I'll propose it to him if he wants because if he doesn't score tomorrow... Actually, I tell you what, if Greenish does start tomorrow, he'll score. I'm telling you that now because he's a villa boy. And, I, have a th- uh, I have a theory. I also want to run with that Hugh Murray fella. Ooh. I want him to do two or three games where he doesn't predict him to score and watch him score. See like, what happens. He, see what he, happens. He, he will be the bad luck. As soon as he doesn't predict him to score, he'll score. I'm telling you now. I'd like to see, I've just seen JSR say, just now Grealish Shamara's any more, any more ever. Pep needs to get inside his bald head. I'd like to see a Grealish Haaland Alvarez thing. I just want to see how it pans out because, again, it gives freedom, that, freedom, it gives Grealish that kind of freedom to go inside if you have Bernardo on midfield. Again, we are talking about this was the last night where Bernardo can overlap. Bernardo gives him an extra facet while Cancelo is also going inside. If Grealish has something overlapping him constantly, I think it's perfect. I was actually only thinking today when I was watching him, uh, I was watching Villa because, again, Sky just started to show a 1-0 instead of a 3-2. Um, I was watching Dinier, and again, I don't rate Dinier particularly high, right? I think he's just bang average, but the way he was overlapping, I was sitting there like, if Grealish is still not fellow team, be absolutely cooking with that. But, it would, we don't have I mean, I'd love to see Sergio Gomez get one as far, but <clears throat> kind of seems like he's uh, a ship has sailed, despite him actually looking really, really good to start with. Anything else you want to mention on the on the Wolves front? Maybe a bit of Diego Costa, Joe? Diego Costa and his, his Wolves, his three Wolves that he was holding in there. <laughs> they rented out a pair of Wolves! <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose the only other way we can, because we've already touched on a double try, I suppose the only other play that we can kind of look at really is... Um, uh, Matthew Noonan, our mate, 
Oh, oh, yeah. We, uh, oh yeah. We were linked with him. Liverpool were linked with him, and then all of a sudden, Wolves go and break that transfer record and go and bring him in. And he's looked all right for them. Again, I don't think he was the proper fit for us. Although I had seen absolutely none of him, so I couldn't no. really comment. But um, he's looked half decent with Wolves. I was the thing. Half, half decent, you know. But it, they, I know they play a midfield too, so like it's not like their strongest area. We we like to say. You win your midfield battle, you win your games. I suppose when yeah. you're going to line up in a 5 4 1, mm-hmm. only having two central midfielders, it's not the end of the world, considering you have a flat four and a flat five behind it. Um, but overall, sure. I expect us to, like always with Wolves, I expect us to dominate. I expect us to go yeah. there and have 70, maybe even 80% of the ball. Like, that is something that I expect. Um, I want fluidity because I think that's a way that you can hurt Wolves with the fact that they are disciplined with the five defenders, you know, having a lot of movement around that front three and in the midfield, having a lot of fluidity with the players that are there being changing with each other and trying different things, um, which is why Alvarez is um, sort of the big one to highlight here because he can go inside, outside, he can join Haaland, he can play wide, he can drop deep. Um so I think that's one of the ways to hurt walls really is to try and be as fluid as possible and a lot of quick movement. You're not going to break them down just by hero ball. That's not going to work against walls. You, you, you're going to struggle to break down walls if you play hero ball, Kevin De Bruyne. Um, that is a call out because passing been a little. It's starting to get me a little bit shaky. Um, it's it's speaking. Speaking of the Bruyne, Dan's left an interesting comment. Before you did a long video for KDB, how about you doing on Grealish? Maybe that helps. The Bruyne is still like the Bruyne went to his purple patch after we put up that video, but he's still not been particularly on fire today. Referee Anthony Taylor, bad news. I'm actually kind of past the Anthony Taylor. I think I think we're shit, we're shit now at this stage. Uh, 17 people watching, 20 likes. Uh, run it up. You get the Discord link at 50 as per usual. But Joe, I'll let you go on with it. I just said I cut in with the with the Dano comment. Yeah, I suppose that the Matthew Matthew Noonan, our mate Matthew, our um, mate Matty, <laughs> it's like he's, he's. I'd say that is even though it's their their weakest point in terms of you'd say like numbers. They only have two central midfielders, and it's probably their strongest position. I'd say that's where mm-hmm. their better players reside. Um, obviously, Jimenez hasn't really you know, picked up after his nasty head injury. He never really got back to the level that he was at before that. He's still struggling a little bit. Um, they've had inconsistent wingers who are very good at dribbling. They're very tricky you players. You leave Pedro Neto out of this. No, they're very technically gifted players, but they have been struggling to put the ball in the back of the net. I'm sure that won't be an issue come tomorrow, but that is the facts of well, the things. Um, everyone's great against City. Everyone has plays our cup final against City. Oh, Jesus, sure. Didn't Joe, didn't the unflip forget to turn on the do not to sub? <laughs> but it is just a case of simplicity, fluidity. Those are the things that are going to win us the game. Um, if we just manage to basically, basically confuse ourselves, if we don't know what we're doing, Wolves aren't going to know what we're doing. That's the game plan yeah. there. You keep it short and simple, a lot of movement, a lot of fluidity. That's why, again, certain players are more suited to this type if you play it. Maris is on, even if Maris was on form, I still wouldn't want him playing this game because he's just so predictable. Like That's not yes. a sort of game where you look at a back five and go, yes, I want predictability. I want, I want, yeah, you know, I, I want crazy. I want things to be all over the place. I want things to just happen. I'm, I'm, re- I'm just looking at this team and I can't fuck me. Sorry, this blade and charge. My brother's had to give me a door to yoke. Right. Uh, I'm just looking at this team. I can't see anything wrong with him. I really can't see anything wrong with him. If we go out and play this team, play the way, even play half, if we play the way we're usually going to, and we just make sure that Freak scores a goal, I think we can get past it. Because Wolves, as I listened to uh, Phil Thompson earlier, he doesn't, they're not very, like, score. Like, they don't score many goals. So if City get one or two, I wouldn't predict them to score. I really wouldn't. I don't care. I, I don't care if our defence looks shaky or not. I think we look somewhat solid, especially now with a Kanji in here. I want to see how good this could be a bit of a test. This will be a pure or counter attack. This will be pace and inshallah. That's what I was saying earlier. This is going to be, uh, what's the fuck I was saying? Neto. It's going to be Neto. It's going to be Traore. It's going to be Diego Costa. Fair enough, probably moves as if he's had three vodka and cokes, but it's fine because with the, co- with the pace and coverage of those two wingers, the defence is going to be putting under a lot of pressure. So, 
this is going to be a kanji's i don't say kanji's lip mistake he's been really really good this could be the 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 game that tony jones says can a kanji deal with this level of counter and press in english football i think he can he's looked fairly good especially against it wasn't i think it was severe he plays first game against he looked really good so i think this is the litmus test for it. can he stand a a sit back and pure counter attack in english football I think he can. I think I'll be really impressed with him tomorrow if he starts. Unless, well, there's no Laporte and Walker doesn't seem to be fit. Anyway, that's the press conference news. But what do you think? Do you think he's, well, obviously you're going to be able, but is this the litmus test for him when it comes to counterattacks? In terms of counterattacks, yes. I would have said a litmus test a couple of years ago, maybe, but we're seeing this transition into teams actually going for us now. Um, yeah. So counterattacking against us, teams are sort of kind of stopping that really not not totally a lot of teams still try to counter attack us because they know that it still you know can work because it has worked in the past but you've seen a lot more teams that have actually gone for us um, especially early yeah. on this season so a litmus test this is probably going to be one of the harder counter attacking teams we're going to face because that is the only threat wolves have they, that, that, yeah. like I'm, genuinely i'll be serious it's the only threat they have is just pace on the counter attack um yeah so that's the biggest test in terms of that, but I don't think it's the proper litmus test yet. Um, I think there's a lot more to go uh, in terms of finding out what his ceiling is. In terms mm-hmm. of, you know, as a defender, we know he's comfortable on the ball. That kind of translates to every single game. But as a defender, it's 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 been more good than bad. I will say. I think obviously we touched on it yesterday. I think he was slightly at fault for the goal. He did get sent to the shops once yesterday, but against Sevilla, there was absolutely nothing doing with him defensively. So, like, it's no major, major negatives. But be interesting. He's very fast, so he should, by all accounts, should be okay with the counter attack because he has the yeah. recovery pace. So he should be fine. But it is still a sort of we haven't really seen it yet. So it is one yeah. to just keep your eye on him. Maybe if. They'd have one or two in the first sort of 20 minutes and they get the better of him once, you know, does he back off a little bit more? You know, how does he react to getting beat for pace or something like that? Because, I mean, Dama Traor is one of the quickest players in the world. Like, you're going to struggle to keep oh, up yeah. with him oh, wherever yeah. you are. So, um, it's a test for the counter, but they won't have much to do. The The biggest the biggest test for me tomorrow um, isn't necessarily the counter attack. It's the concentration can they stay concentrated yeah. wolves are only going to have one or two chances like one or two good chances um like can they stay concentrated can they you know keep focus um because that's that's a way that we've considered goals in the past to be honest where we dominate the ball we let him we let them have one decent chance it's in the back of the net because we switched off um that's yeah. a big thing for us in the past so you know I'd, it, it's not the hardest fixture in the world i'm more not concerned, but I'm more interested to see how we deal with going forward than at the back. Yeah, because you can very easily outscore Wolves again. I don't want to, I don't want to disrespect them, but they don't score many goals. Very easily outscore Wolves. If C put two or three past them, well, obviously it's just a very anti statement. But if C put two or three past anyone, you'd highly back them to go on and win the toy, win the game, whatever. But again, this I think it, it tests concentration. This would be like. Can, can he for me this is Kenny Hacker Kenny Hacker uh, Wolves have been playing a four so we look into the out of touch um, right Mares needs a right footed overlapping full back on the side I completely agree with that it was a uh, we were on a stream or a video and it's all about the Barca again it was the Barca game when he had a uh, when he had Cancelo overlapping and we scored off it I think was it Palmer's goal was it Mares goal it was Palmer's goal but I'm sorry Mares Mares doesn't need an outside overlapping fullback he's had kyle walker who's a right footed right back he needs fucking allah he needs help he needs jesus <laughs> he needs fucking some holy act to become good at the moment because i i don't, I don't know what's going on i mean we could we could talk about it more in depth but i don't really want to because i feel like we didn't no, cover we it against in Dortmund, but we went into you, could, now, you could put whoever you want at right back i don't think it's solving the problem let's say i think we're... Let's see, this fans here to lay off Grealish. He will cut his time will come. Pep got him for a reason. Yeah, well, Pep got him for a reason. Just not walking, my brother. Uh, back Grealish to do well, but he shouldn't be anywhere near the starting line. But 
if Foden and Alvarez are clearly dead right, but Foden's not been averted to blame either, Dan. I'll tell you that much for free. Let's can call I just, them. I'm can pretty- I just read you some stats? Actually? I was looking into this back four. They played a back four in their last match against Southampton. They have scored three goals this season in the Premier League. Um, Mother of Christ. Two from Pedence and one from Neves. Hello, elated on YouTube. Let's see who else we got there. Brennan MCFC. Come on, City tomorrow. Yes, up the Tala Blues. I'd love to. I'd love to have Bernardo partner Rodri in the middle of the pitch and have KDB free mo- free roam with Alvarez and Foden pinning back and deadly hard in the front. That'd be really nice. And almost a, f- a four-two-three-one. Players to watch social media slagging off our players doesn't help. We had it with Stone. Here, Stones was served them, and Stones was absolutely dog for about three years. God love him. Edison as well. Ed- Edison, I feel that he didn't deserve it. Now that's not what I'm saying. I thought Edison the abuse was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, like I think you're all, I think it's all you're 100% fair to have a goal player so on Twitter that's my opinion because we've had our fair I think I only had a goal Mara said the other day yes lads great lineup. Stones you know the goal tomorrow John Stones is scoring for us tomorrow you can back that you can back that what's the update with Walker's injury I think it was Pep said he doesn't know if he's going to be fit for Wolves aka he is not going to be fit for Wolves and will not be back after the break I think it might be I think it's a lot worse than he's letting on what do you think um, is he finished? Is he not? I don't know. Um, we'll Ooh, see. We'll, he's we'll, finished. I'm not going with that. Well, I guess we'll see if he's finished or not. I suppose if he's injured, then let him recover. Um, but I mean, look, I I watched the uh, city documentary. The what the fuck is it called? I only uh, uh, together. together together because they released part seven the other day. So I I finished watching it. Um, I ran through the whole thing and. Aguero was there in one of the episodes, and Kyle Walker oh, was saying, me, "I haven't finished it." Shush, Kyle Walker. Basically, the where I'm getting at with this is Kyle Walker had an ankle injury that was the same one that Sergio Aguero had. That is, Ooh. that is scary. That's... We know how bad Aguero was with his injuries and how much it affected him. If he's got even similar, I'm, I'm, st- I'm worried. Well, I'm really worried. Was more- the knees, wasn't he? he had really bad knees until he got the operation. Dennis the ankle went, it's turned the chocolate ankles then. God love yeah. him, man. That could be bad, especially now. Like, I walk us towards the tree. That's what he said. He said, um, you know, that you got the tingling sensation. He said, yeah, yeah, same one that I had. And that inst- I instantly went, oh, no. It's like, not looking good, it's, brave. <laughs> when you've got a similar injury to that man who's basically had a fantastic career one of our best ever players that we've ever had at this football club and he still could have been better because of his injuries like it's not good having the same injury as that it's 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 a bit scary to be honest but i'm i'm not going to jump the gun and say he's finished yet he's had a poor start to the season he was rushed back last season for the champions league semi-final which to be honest he never should have done that. I know we were looking good when he was on the pitch, but he never should have done that. He was he's in his thirties. I think he was 30s. right. There. He's in he was 30s, right there. Man. If we had gone through, we wouldn't be saying that, in my opinion. Yeah, Dennis but he's Walker in his thirties, man. You can't risk him. He doesn't have too long left in his career. I think you've got to be smarter than that. Walker isn't good enough on the ball players and very fullback. I agree with that part. If he has a future at City, it's a sent back possibly in a back tree. Pep Guardiola will never play a back tree. Was it a proper back tree, like back tree with two flying wingers? It will never happen. I've given up. I have given up. And Kyle Walker, as good as he would be there, will never play right centre back in a tree for City. I don't think. And anyway, because we've had the chance, we've now got five senior centre halves, and we've not played it. So. I've given up on that. What do we think of the North vs South? It's not a North vs South league. It's an All Star game, right? I actually don't know what I think about it yet. I'm, me and Joe watch a lot of American sports. Right? Me and Joe would stay up and watch the basketball. We'd stay up, well, I'd stay up and watch the NFL. Joe would kind of just be there smiling. But we watch a lot of American sports, and I am completely against it. The, would it be called the Americanization? The, the Americanization of football is just not something I'm about. Like, all-star games, it's a very weird thing. Like, I... He, when you have 22 man squads, you have to get a team in from every, you have to get a player in from every team, in my opinion, but that just doesn't make it. And I'll start having people there for numbers. Like, who are you going to bring off in off not have like Dean Henderson as a backup keeper to play the second half? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not far, but I'm not against it. If they turned around and said it, that was happening, I'd watch it. And I'd actually try to go to it, to be honest with you, if it was able. But it's like, it's like kind of just a higher level soccer ad at that point, Joe. What do you think, Bill? Before we go back into the match, what do you think, Will? 
we're going to continue on the match because uh, a few hours ago when I spoke to Hugh Murray, we are actually going to do a... This is going to be a bit of content where we do discuss this during the international break. We're going to hold off. Oh, yes. Or yes. I'm going to hold Lindsay, off on my uh, thoughts. Boy, Jesus, we need content. I'm going to hold off on my thoughts because, listen, by the time the international break comes around, we'll have a, a, a little bit of a discussion about that North versus South um, All-Star game because it is a very interesting one. I do want to have a conversation, but I feel like it, it it's almost suited to its own video. It's like a it's a, it's a big thing. Um this all-star game because there's a lot of um there's a lot of rules that need clarifying um you know when is it going to happen how are they going to schedule it with the busy fixture he's frozen out on my own hello everybody um he's gone see you later um hey, oh. i am so sorry right so basically basically what's happened here is right i was running out of my phone hotspot and my phone has died because my brother charges a lot of shit so i'm back on the internet Anyway, continuing. Um, yeah, that'll be its own standalone video because there's a there's a lot to cover, and I feel like having its own video because it's a it's a big thing. It would genuinely change the entire calendar, so it's something that yeah. we will cover in detail in due course. Yeah, I don't think we say two or four because I genuinely don't know, and I'm sure you have an answer. But again, we need a video, we need a video desperately. I don't know what you guys uh, think. I, you know what? Yeah, I said this too, but I think ever since we've actually got a proper. With proper nine, proper striker. Bernardo's looked really, really good in the right. It also allows, I know he's not in the team, but also allows Gundogan to get in the team constantly a good bit more, be a pace setter. I think having Gundogan as a pace setter tomorrow could actually be really, really good if he's if he starts. If he if he starts, he starts. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But if Gundogan starts tomorrow, we said this last night, he'd be a really good pace setter. Because you're going to need a pace setter for this game tomorrow. You're going to need someone who can control the tempo of a game and say, right, if De Bruyne is... Uh, I'm singling out with De Bruyne, but you know what I mean. If the Bruyne's crosses aren't working, I can get this. I can play it in behind. We can either assist a goal, have it with a penalty, whatever you saw against West Ham. West Ham set up in a really pragmatic style as well. Um, Gundogan was the line breaker that game. So was the Bruyne, but Gundogan was the first one to pretty much successfully break the lines that game. So that's what that's what I want to say. If it's not working out, you have Gundogan in reserve. You have him to come on, which is fantastic. But I've kind of gone off point. Having him there allows Bernardo to be on the right, and Bernardo really hasn't been bad on the right because his, uh, his service has been pretty good. His service has been really, really good this season as well, which is strange because I wouldn't usually I wouldn't usually uh, put him down to a creator. He's definitely more of a workhorse in the midfield. You have him beside Rodri for more defensive coverage, which allows fullbacks to go up and down. But right now, we're, we're playing with fullbacks in midfield. So I said this when we played. I've said this point about 4,000 times at this point, but Bernardo looked... Do I say poor? Do I say he looked a bit out of place when we had an inverted fullback playing in the midfield against Club America? So that's why I think when we're playing this style of system, he could be better for it out on the right. And again, his serves have been really good this year, so I know he could feast off that. Would you agree with that? Uh, well, the whole narrative of him not being good on the wing is completely false. Um, He's just, he was, for a couple stopped. of years, for a few years, he was just better in midfield. I wish, yeah, but I wish this whole narrative of him not being effective or not being good on the wing would just stop. Like, I think it's ridiculous to even be having this conversation. I've been in the, I've gone in the past and I've said I don't like it because I prefer other options. Yeah, but it's not completely ineffectual. Like, you can't sit there and go, "Oh, don't play him on the right because he does nothing." Um, yeah. Like, he can facilitate De Bruyne because if he moves inside, De Bruyne can move outside. Um, yeah. He can also work with a fullback, whichever fullback. It doesn't matter if they invert or if they overlap. It doesn't matter. He can work with them. Um, press from the front. That is something that we like to do, try and win the ball back. Like, would you stop buying things around, man? i I'm, I'm put my phone on charge. Shut up. <laughs> um, but I... I I, I really ho I really wish this narrative would stop. I don't, I, I, I used to say I hated it because it was terrorism against the sport, but that's only because we had like an on form Mares. Um but right now when we have we have a lack of options, essentially. Well not a lack of options, but we have like a what you'd say would be our typical wide options not performing. So what do you do? You add the goal threat of Vilkai Gun the one in the midfield, move Bernardo Silva on the right wing. Most of his contributions this season have come when he's on the right. So I think this yeah. whole thing of him not being effectual just needs to stop. Just needs to stop. Just just a little bit. Like we we've we've had this. Um, oh well, maybe not us, but I've had this sort of 
thing, obviously, is dribbling is it's not messy level because you can't get messy level. It's messy esque. But it, it's it's messy esque. It's very close to the it does, at least the way he dribbles, the way he sticks to his foot, which as a winger, you kind of need to be able to dribble with the ball. What yeah. you know, Messi's best years at Barcelona. You know, he was either a false nine, which Bernardo Silva's played, or a right wing. You know, Bernardo Silva is a. It's not similar, but in the way that he carries the ball, it is it's like he works as yeah. a winger. Um, I'm not comparing him to Messi. It's like, it almost sounds like I am, but I'm not. It's the way he, it's on the more ball. Than Messi. On the ball, there aren't many better dribblers than him, and no. that is almost invaluable in a wide position, especially when you got Maras, who you'd typically describe as a, a world class dribbler, just passing backwards all the time. You need I'm someone who's going to take his man on. Yeah, he's been stinking at Gaffel Blade and he rehab Maris. Uh, I do agree with that. I, I think he, I think Bernardo off the right this season has been absolutely incredible. KDB, Hal, and Alvarez will shine tomorrow. Again, that's providing Alvarez starts when you have to be. I, I, this is not, this is nothing we've heard. I've not heard a thing about this. This is a pure prediction. I'm not sure if he's going to say, I hope he says so. I drop Maris. I join Maris to Paris. When our wingers get involved, Harlan had loads of goals. Fouled and greatest from our as are below par this season. 100% they are below par. We need pace tomorrow. Gundogan very intelligent, but not as quick. See, that's the thing in this kind of... We, we banged this drum for a while now. In this kind of thing where Wolves are going to sit back, they're going to play either a 5 or a 4, however they play. Gundogan is that type of player who has a calm head he won't just start kicking balls into the box constantly because he'd be able to slow it down he has quick feet he'd be able to get past someone and put it through again I don't think he's going to start I think this will be the team to be honest with you I really do but if Gundogan starts I'm going to throw my toys out of the pram he's fantastic I the the three, the 180 we've done on Gundogan I think over the last couple of years is amazing because you know he's gone from kind of do I say a scapegoat? He's definitely a scapegoat for a couple no, of years. He's, he's gone, gone from shit holding midfielder. Yeah, he's to... gone from shit holding midfielder <laughs> on a double pivot to a goal scorer, a slash ten, however you want to call it, captain of the club, who I will break down crying if he leaves at the end of the season. When so he can only... leaves at the end of the season. Yeah, it's a when. It, unfortunately, <laughs> it is a when it is the end of the season. I cannot say him really. I hope he gets a year. That'd be really nice. But I can see him back in uh, back in Darwin or something. Do a straight swap with uh, Bellingham. No, sorry. Back three season. No, it's never going to be a back three season. It Listen. actually upsets me. I'd Listen. love to see a back three. I'd fucking love to see a back three. It upsets me that we're not going to see it. Like, we are. I said, do you remember the, Do you remember before the start of the season? Like, back when we actually signed Haaland. I was like, yeah, I'm banging this room. We're going to play. We're going to play a back three. We're going to play a back three with overlapping fullbacks. No, no. Um, Listen, just I think we should kill this idea now. We should kill the idea of we've we've signed another yeah. centre half that we never thought we were going to sign, and we still haven't fucking seen it. <laughs> it's never going to happen. We played John Make Stones at right Park's back. We've played Laporte. John Stones at right back multiple times, yeah. and we haven't seen it. We played RK at full back. My brother in Christ, he's dead in the water. Please just move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's so upsetting, is it? I'd love to see it, even just for again. Do you remember a couple of years? Yeah, it wasn't last year. It was the season before. We played uh, Fulham away, and we actually did play a proper five. I'd love to see that just to just to see what it's like. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Play it for one game, play against uh, play against a Forest or a Leicester because Leicester are shit in the bed at the minute. Uh, we switch to a back three in the second half against Palace. I'll be honest with you, Dennis. I was in work for that. I saw the highlights. I can't remember. I think was that the. Uh... Was that the game when Walker was getting caught out and then Pep gave him a bollock and for going past the halfway line? Yeah, similar things with Stones. He gave him a bollock in for, I think, misplacing a pass and then made it up yeah. for him by shouting at him at the end. You're, You're the man. man. You're the man. I'm sorry for shouting wouldn't, at you. <laughs> wouldn't say Foden has been crap this year. I wouldn't call him crap. I think that's being harsh, but he hasn't been to a high, high standard that we set. Uh, speaking of John Stones, what a fucking player. Oh, I alluded there was James. only one player better than Messi in the world. It is John Stones. It is a John Stones world. You are simply living in it. I don't think he has any cause for dropping tomorrow because he is the man, to quote, to quote the greatest manager of all time. He is the man. And if he's the man, I want him in every game because you can't drop him. I mean, he's scoring goals and he will score tomorrow as well. I think we've gone over the defence too much to do it, but I think someone has to be mentioned 
in a way of breaking up counter attacks tomorrow. Rodri could be absolutely crucial tomorrow. He's coming off against a good, coming off what I thought was a really, really good performance against Dortmund after being not as good as last season from the start of this season. I think it's fair to say it could be that, that could be me talking bollocks now, to be honest with you. But I think in the grand scheme of things, Rodri looked a lot better last season. But I think there was more attacking done against us last season. Rodri in this game could be crucial in breaking down counter attacks. He's a certainty to be booked. Cancelo's a certainty to be booked. But I can live with that if you come out with the result. I, th- I think this could be a really another really, really good game for Rodri. You know, he'd be building it up. I know he'd be going into the international break, but you come against United, the other side of it. He needs to get a couple of good performances, a couple of really standout performances, because again, he's been constantly sevens. Constantly sevens, and that's all he can ask for. But if he comes out with a really, really good performance, then he could absolutely destroy United himself. What do you think? It's just the the entire defence. I saw when I was looking at Wolves oh God, in terms really? of the the way that they were playing Wolves. Um, it was they they played two two different systems. Um, yes. One was a four four three three, four two three one. If they play a four two three one, then you'd assume Rodri would be on that pocket player, whoever plays in that number ten position. He could be a winger playing in the number 10 position, in which case he needs to watch himself because they are probably going to be quicker than most who play that mm-hmm. position, um, which again is a test because when the fullbacks invert, then maybe they'll also be tasked at holding that, you know, them pockets of space in that central area. You never know, which is uh, does create an interesting um, tactical decision as to what you do with the fullbacks. Of course, we are going to see two inverted fullbacks because Pep is dying on this hill at the moment of making this work. It's very strange. Um, it's very, very strange. So I suppose, yeah, you got to live with it even when you got John Stones playing it right back. It still happens. Staying, it's inevitable at this point. You live with it. You roll with it. Um, but overall, like, again, defensively, we're not going to, we shouldn't be troubled too much. If we're getting troubled defensively, we're doing something horribly, horribly wrong in terms of overall game management. Wolves are not a team that have ever, ever, ever dominated a side. At least not in the last no. five years. They do no. not dominate teams. Even when they tip play teams... This is, this was the thing about Wolves. Remember when they were getting into European football and they had Nuno? They were terrible. being all the good teams and they were yeah. losing to all the bottom half teams because they weren't dominant and they weren't creative yeah. enough and they were struggling against teams who played like they did against the big teams. It's like what United are now. It's um, Obviously, they've changed a bit. They have changed a bit. I think they've their results, at least, against the bigger sides have dipped, but they are picking up points, more points, than they used to be against sides that they probably should be. Um, yeah. They're a mid-table club with aspirations to try and get back in the European places, so, you know, it's not an easy game. Um, they've always given us a tough test whenever we've played them. Uh, last year, I know we what, 5-1 at their place at the end of the season. Yeah. It was 1-0. The first game was 1-0, a penalty. Like, it's not easy when we play them. They don't make it easy, which is why, I mean, they could pull out a five at the back. If if I'm going to be honest, looking at the way they've played this season and seeing they haven't used it, I'd say they probably won't because why would you change? But at the same time, they've scored three goals all season and they are playing a team who have a striker that's just one player a month with nine and five. So what do you do? Yeah. Uh, it, uh, you can correct me if I'm saying it's wrong. Aubrey, Aubrey and Aubrey and says, why do you think Ake and Akanjo are tomorrow? What's wrong with Diaz? We actually have Diaz starting, so I'm not sure what start that is. Uh, Ake will, uh, I don't think we'll start. I think Diaz is fine, fine enough to start. Uh, injury wise, he hasn't seemed to get out and since the last one, really. City versus Portugal, I think we've got as many Portuguese players now, we can't really say. Wolves are kind of a downgrade of a Spurs team. Do you know what? I actually kind of think he's hitting out of the head there. I think every. Every kind of player they have is a sixty percent of what a sports player is. If you think about it, except for the keeper, mm. I think Jose Sal is a better keeper than Hugo Lloris. Not done. Mm. Hugo Lloris is mm. overrated. It's a very Hugo Lloris, interesting point. Can I? Can I? I just want to get close to the mic for this. Hugo Lloris is the most overrated pile of shit. Ever. <laughs> right? He is. He he's always had a good defensive. Run. No, majority of the time he's had a really good defensive front of him. I think he's got wrist made of pop and arms, as you've seen constantly. He drops the ball into his own net way too many times to be considered a top-class goalkeeper. There's so many better goalkeepers, Jose Sa included. Listen, listen, listen. Just calm down for a second. I do want to make Sorry. the point. 
that I think nine out of the 11 players that, uh, when you talk about a downgrade, nine Spurs players are like, you are right, like nine Wolves players are 60%. I think Ruben Neves is a better midfielder than oh, Rodrigo Bentancourt. Rodrigo Bentancourt doesn't touch Ruben Neves. No. Um, Ruben Neves but is apart from that it's yeah. like yeah they are just like a, they're a Portuguese Spurs like <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to I think we can we can go through this for a couple minutes let, let me just who was the last you talk there for a second right? Let's we don't, see. don't need to go through this we don't need to talk about top Spurs right Nathan Collins is better, is, uh, better than Eric Dorr uh, shush in, just got an England call up <laughs> shut up <laughs> Ka- Kalijic doesn't have a knee, unfortunately. Can we not talk about Wolves and their injuries and stuff, oh. please? It's not a, Neves, Neves is such a baller. I said this a while ago, that if we hadn't signed Phillips, Neves would have been a fantastic six for us, right? But, again, I'm happy with Phillips. I don't, I don't mean to, to come across in a bad yeah, way. Yeah, Phillips I was think, 43 million. Yeah. Ruben Neves. And homegrown. Uh, and, homegrown <laughs> and has fantastic hair. It does. Yes, he brought right up the, like I think look I think personally I think Nevers would have brought up paying FC a lot, but when you have Calvin Phillips it's not it's not bad it's not bad at all. Now what are we? We've gone very now? very 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 off topic here. Yeah, yeah, we have. So I'll bring it back. We've twenty four watching. We've twenty four likes. Please run that up again. You get the Discord link at fifty. Look, keep sharing that around. We're trying to get three point three point five. We're looking at now We're about seventy subscribers off three point five k. If we get three point five k tonight, you could never hear me again. They will be thinking of our danger man, all of them, yeah, but you have to realise there are six, there are five or six danger men. You cannot hold on to uh, five or six danger men for 90 minutes. It's impossible, especially when you have another two or three coming off the bench. Like, you have to think about some of the danger men we have. We've Haaland, we have Foden, we have De Bruyne, we have Stones, we have... Stop Greenish. mentioning John Stones when we're talking about going forward, man. <laughs> Still got the time. Like we we have all that. They're not going to be able to keep. Like we saw what happened with Harlem when we played Bournemouth. Whenever he got the ball, three or four men were on him. That leaves so much space for someone to run in behind, like a gun. I'm telling you now, gun and stones, two goals scored tomorrow. Stop. Promise you. <laughs> someone mentioned John Stones. Uh, we Look, get it. You have a man crush. Move on. It's just a crush, man. Unfortunately, it's just a crush. Uh, Look. We're going, we are going dead off topic here, right? But I think it has to be said that when you're looking at that, you can't focus on six players at once without leaving someone open. You know what I mean? You can't do that. Sounds a rock hall in the mountain. Yeah, we got that. We got that. Something's just popped up in my head, actually, um, which I am, I am going to look for tomorrow, even though it is no. the early kickoff. Please, 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 please do not let Kevin De Bruyne take a set piece. Please, oh, please, 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 let someone else try. Let someone else at least try to take a set piece other than him. Please. It's not even just the Brian. It's not, it's not even just the Brian. It's, I think Foden's set pieces have been awful too. Let someone else do Let Bernardo Silva take a corner. Let Cancelo take a corner for all I care. Let someone else do it. I'm sick of him hitting yeah. the first man. He's yeah, doing he... me tits in. We are playing... Th- <sighs> we are, we're in a situation, right? If this team is correct, we have five players who would all be in the box who are over six foot. And we're not beating... Like, if we don't beat the first man, we're missing a golden opportunity to get a goal. Like, Why come on. Like Angie's like six one, I want to say. Like he's very big. Christ. Um, he's still four inches off made up. But if we take that team, for example, which yeah. if you look at it, the five players that I mentioned that were over six foot are probably <laughs> the five most nailed on. <laughs> yeah. If we are not being the first man from a corner, it is absolutely abysmal. We have got so many people to aim for in the box from a set piece that I'm not saying we should be scoring, but we should be threatening with them because. Yeah. We've got an opportunity here where, you know, last season we had what Diaz was never the best from corners himself. He didn't. He's not the. He's not really the guy from corners. But you had Stones, you had Laporte, you had Rodri. You know, those those are the three you'd look for whenever they were on the pitch and go corner. We have a chance of scoring. I mean, we've got Kanji, we've got Stones, Diaz is capable. Rodri, we've got Haaland now. I mean, you saw how high he got for the goal against Dortmund. Man, the man can leap. Um, we've got so many things to aim for from a set piece. The delivery needs to be better. 
which is why I am campaigning. Kevin De Bruyne, get those set pieces out of your locker immediately. Please, please, let someone else try. If they're shit as well, then take them back. But please, no one can see that. <laughs> but it causes the camera. Bring back short corners. Exactly. Um, exactly. We made this point, didn't we, that uh, when, when we pass it short and the guy crosses it in from short, you're less likely to hit the first man because all the defenders have moved out of the way. <laughs> um, but we need, we need to do something, whether it's going back to short corners or just letting someone else try and take them. Like, it's not going to happen. De Bruyne will be on corners for the end of time. But, and so will Foden. Like, it's never going to happen. But I want to see it. I want to see change because it's, at the moment, have we scored a set piece? Have we scored direct from a set piece? Not directly, no. I don't think directly. I think what it should be, sure, Connor. Just tell Cantel to Travella because it seems to work every other time. Anyway. But uh, I think it needs to be, because again, we look really threatening. We were talking about it last night, like you said, a short corner. Let every defender move out to try and press the ball. Next thing you know, it's in behind Haaland scoring his 14th goal. Like, it's... I don't know why it hasn't been yours. I don't know if Pep's thinking, like, oh, we could get found out. Yeah, use it's it too to good to waste. Up. It's too use good to it. waste. It's We've it. gone from it's a team it. who have scored yeah. the most set piece goals to a team where I can't name you a set piece goal from this season so far. No, it's uh, it's like the uh, for those who play FM, me and Joe play FM. It's like that corner thing where you put the centre half on the front post. He just always scores. It's literally like it is breaking. It is breaking down teams. It's, if you get a corner. It can be whoever you want. It can literally be De Bruyne taking the corner. If he plays a short instead of trying to put it out to Maris on the edge of the box, I don't know what to think. clearing thinking. absolutely oh, everybody in the process. Oh, my God. It was, that, look, it worked against United, but you have to realise the level took of the it, t- it took a deflection as well against United. Did it take a deflection out to him? No, no. Maris' shot took a deflection yeah, I know that. When, he, I know when that. he hit it. So, like... That, don't try the edge of the box shit unless you're taking it short to the edge of the box don't try just pinging it out to the edge of the box <laughs> that is pointless it's not good it's, it's not good it doesn't the ball, work the like ball I, hangs in the air for 10 seconds and the defender's there when it's coming down to Mara's anyway and they just clear yeah. it yeah it's, it, that's a really really poor corner technique but I tell you what if, if we use that that short corner more and look even if it gets found out and people start marking it that's an extra man out of the box it's pulling people away from from the box it has to be done. It has to be at least be tried because my God, I'm sick and tired of it. Because it always goes to the same place. It always goes in and around the penalty box, but it's not going to the penalty spot. It's going to the six yard box. It's going in and around there. And next thing you know, it's the defender on the front post gets a clear anyway. It's no point in getting a corner. It's not point in getting a corner because nothing comes from it. It's so annoying. It's like just watching constantly the same thing over and over again. And it's not walking. Like, wait, chances are we're going to look, we're going to have a lot of shots tomorrow. Chances are that Jose Safala. Players like he's on coke, he's unbelievable. Like he is so active, he gets down to every ball. If he's doing that, we're gonna get a lot of corners. They need to be better. They need to be better because that piece just works. Not even just corners; it's free kicks as well. But we had to give a special shout out to corners here because they've been abysmal from whoever's taking them. And I haven't seen Gundogan take one. If he starts, I want him on them. I think someone who was it who said there Gundogan's crosses are great. It was Aubrey, and yeah, exactly. His crosses are unbelievable. He needs to be. He needs to be taking more corners, in my opinion. Got a feeling. I guess that's the, um... creating a new system like false nine. Um, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that's what he's kind of aiming for. Akanji loves attacking balls and yet great. Yeah, he does. In fairness, he does. He's very aggressive. I like that mindset, but it could be leaving him open to the back. Cancelo cross is brutal. Cancelo's crosses can be brutal, but then you pull out his Trevella pass and you forget everything. Like that, that was it, dude. And I, I think Cancelo got given man the match by a lot of people. One Travella does a lot for you, brother. Just watch Dennis just said put Haaland corners. No, we need him. My brother in Christ, we need him in the no, box. No, 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 my, bro, my, my brother. My brother. <laughs> we need him in the box. I guess... We need... I guess that's like... It's almost like... You think about it more, that's almost a campaign for Grealish to start as well because you'd put you'd probably put him on corners, just give him a go on corners. I know he... I think he used to Let's take them that. at Villa, um, actually. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what... I've, yeah, I don't think I've ever... Seen... At Villa. I don't think I've ever seen him take a corner for City. I don't know what I don't know what the game plan is there. I know we have Kevin De Bruyne, but I mean, <laughs> like, you could try Grealish on a corner. Maybe he's maybe his delivery is good, and maybe you know if he could take corners good, his assists will start going up, and then everyone will stop getting on his back, and then maybe he gets a bit of confidence about him. You never know. There's small things. I'd try it if he plays, but again, like we're talking hypotheticals. We're talking what we would do. That's never going to happen. De Bruyne's been on set pieces forever, and he will continue to be on set pieces forever, um, even if he. 
which I'm surprised hasn't happened yet, even if he manages to take it and it goes out of play and back in in a goal kick or completely misses the front post and goes in the side netting, goes out for a goal kick. I'm surprised neither of those have happened yet because our corners have been abysmal. Um, but even if he does that, um, I doubt it'll be taken off. But listen, it's like... It's just very, very frustrating to go from a team that had all these ways of scoring, specifically from set pieces, we conceded the least and scored the most in the Premier League last season. And we look far from it at the moment. So uh, yeah. I think that's one that we need to improve on, whether it's going back to short corners, letting someone else take them. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I suppose that... You know, there's only so many things you could try before you go just a useless, you know, everyone's just useless at kicking the ball from the corner. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think it should just step in. If we try to get a corner, I think we just run over and just boot it out for a goal kick because it'll be as productive in any way. Uh, yeah, look, it's 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 just, it's going to be, a, sorry, in my I've opinion. Got, I've got an image in my head of, <laughs> I've got an image in my head of this is not De Bruyne good. going over to take a short corner from, in front of the family stand and then someone like, I don't know, someone like Rodri just go bang. <laughs> straight <laughs> yeah, in the family stand. Take it, Rodri just says no. <laughs> straight in the family uh, stand. I just be, have this it would literally be as productive though. That's what it is. Uh, before his injury, uh, Greatest was in form, I actually thought he was playing. He was playing about the phone because he actually had a little bit of a link up with Haaland, which was mad. But that seems to have died a death, unfortunately. But look, la, you probably thought I was going to forget it, Joe. You all probably thought I was going to forget because I have form for forgetting this. Give me a score prediction. I'm going to run a poll. I love the polls. Oh, Jesus. He's pulling out a poll. Who who will be better on on, on set pieces? No, should we boot it over a goal kick? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing a result. People, get your score predictions in, but also vote on the poll because I do I do like polls. I like polls. Um, Vote on the poll. Oh, I was right going to make an awful joke there. Go on, Milf. Hey, hey, listen. Poll. Uh, Paul is up. The result: Wolves draw or City. I suppose Sitter. you could say. Anyway, score predictions time. Um, I'm gonna go for a two nil, two nil City win. Ooh, he's um, gone for the Phil Thompson scorer. I go for the two. Listen, I think that I wouldn't be entirely surprised if Wolves managed to grab something grab a goal, maybe even the first goal and put us under a bit of pressure. But at the same time, I think you are right. If we just grab two, then what are the chances of Wolves scoring two? Like, it's it's not impossible that they score two. But considering they scored three all season, I'd fucking put a lot of money <laughs> on it being one. <laughs> but no, I, I think 2-0, um, because lately our defences look great. Of course, the Dortmund goal was a bit unfortunate um, because at the end of the day, Bellingham has scored off a shot. <laughs> it's yeah, not a cross. He's really scored off a shot. Um, yeah, respect him getting in on it, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can say that. Respect him getting on to it. But defensively, we haven't been an issue. But it is a different test. We we assume that Wolves are going to counter-attack us, although we assumed they were playing a five and we were wrong. So we could genuinely be dead wrong. But yes. with the assumption that they're going to counter-attack us, um, I think that... You know, we, we've seen Sevilla do them little, like, chip balls over the top against us that Diaz and Akanji dealt with really, really, really well. Um, so I don't think there's any reason why something thing can't happen here because I know they're going to try the same thing, balls in behind over the top to fast, tricky wingers. Uh, in terms of goal scorer, I'm not going to say John Stones. I'm not. It's funny, <laughs> enough, it's funny enough you would say that, right? Because... Uh... I'm not going to say John what Stones. What is he cooking? What is he cooking? If Alvarez starts... He will score. That is my Ooh. goal scorer. If he starts, he will score. Um, do you want mine? What is your <laughs> score prediction? And please, no no prizes for guessing who he's going to put as a goal scorer. I'm going to go with a, che- a cheeky train L, right? A cheeky train L. With, but I will say this. If we concede, we will concede for us. It will be 1-0 to Wolves if they score, right? And we'll end up coming back. I'm going to say 3-0. I'm going to say... Haaland. I'm gonna say. Listen, you can't say Haaland times one. You fraud. It's a I'm going for Haaland. Look, I'm going for Haaland times one. Sell me one to three, <laughs> one to three on uh, Paddy Power. Uh, yes, we'll go for that. We'll go for 
John Stallings definitely scum. Wagwan General. <laughs> Wagwan General. It's gonna be. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go to save option for yourself. I'm gonna go with Julian Alvarez if he starts and if he doesn't start. I'm heartbroken. <laughs> if he doesn't, if he doesn't start, start, I'm heartbroken. Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish just score if he doesn't stay, if he starts, right? <laughs> Listen, we've been on off a bang on an hour. Do we wrap it up? Unless anyone else has got any uh, any final thoughts, anything right, that we You have till 32 missed. to get your final thoughts in here and we'll discuss it. You have until 32, so go for it. So we'll natter on for a little bit longer. I think Rodri could pull one out if we if we go for broke and we actually start crossing things in properly. I think Rodri could end up coming out with one as well, which is mad. But will Alvarez close the gap to uh, to nine goals on Erling Haaland because he is currently our second highest scorer with three goals? Ah, oh, look at that super chat from the man himself, Doctor Footy of Sky Blue. He's changing, lads. I believe we are achieving immortality. <laughs> funnily you know enough. What? Funnily enough, when Dr. Furry has come in with the super chat, one vote for Wolves on the poll has come in. <laughs> yeah, dear. one vote. Simply you know, that was one vote at six votes. So someone in the first seven votes. Uh, the match is a Wolves. Yes. Babe Station time. Fantastic, Alex Johnson. What a Friday night from yourself. Good night, lads. Hoping to see you tomorrow. Arbian, you will see us for a video tomorrow. There will be no stream. Murray's working at five. I mean, I, I, I'd be around for a stream, but we're going to go for a video. I don't think we've uploaded a video in two weeks. Lazy bastards well, uh, we are. No, you say two weeks. We haven't uploaded a video since whenever Newcastle was. I think that's the last time. Oh, it's been a while. It was me. <laughs> Dennis says, it was me. Because he has voted for Wolves. Anyway, yeah, anyway, fuck the lot of Sorry. That was a bit... Um, fuck the fuck a lot of you. 20%, 20% of the... Man, basically, two people have said Wolves, so whoever those two people are... Uh, name, and sh- <laughs> name and shave you. Name and shame it yourself. It's... Uh, well, it's... I know who one of them is. Uh, by the way, uh, Alec Johnson says, my granddaughter just filled a nappy. Looks like Old Trafford. Old Trafford's falling apart. You said that it's on fun. the last stream as well. I'm pretty sure I saw that one last night. <laughs> Copy and paste it. Use it for everyone, and we will pin it eventually. You should do this more often, guys. Oh man, we've been we've been streaming like we've been uh, streaming like motherfuckers. Like we are on it. To be honest with you, it's really good. Though. I'm really enjoying it. We get to get a lot of people like yourself in our. I'm not sure if I've actually seen you here before, but then again, I do not pay attention to them. It's not in a bad way. I just kind of forget. Um, the left hand scorer is Wolves. Yes, I get you. Name and sha- name and shave us. Don't be sad, Tom, but the shaving. I'm pissed, lads. Yes, Doctor Footy of Sky Blue. What a fucking nutter Friday night for yourself. Goodbye to my beard. Rest in peace to Dennis's beard. We've given them to the Tory too. There have been no other talks except for shaving beards, and that's kind of a touchy subject hey, to me. City made me bald. Well, you know, like that's the last. Yes. That's the last message that we are. Uh, yeah, that's he it. Says- that's it. That's what we're covering. <laughs> <laughs> Shitey nappies that look like all Trafford and City making them bald. Good night. God bless. We'll see you for a video tomorrow. Come on. Come on. <laughs>